Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have fire mummies. This discovery isn't necessarily one that came from a tomb, but it is from an ancient burial site, and it's unlike anything I've ever seen before. This is something that was discovered when loggers ended up stumbling upon the Kabayan burial caves and found a bunch of tiny nut-like coffins. This led people to wonder how the ancient culture of the Abaloi, the ones who created these burial caves, managed to fit the deceased inside of these small coffins, and the answer is unbelievably fascinating. When a member of the tribe was close to death, they were forced to gulp down a bunch of salt water, which essentially would begin the curing process from the inside out. Once they died, they would be rubbed down with herbs and then literally slow roasted over a period of weeks or months, and it is said to help speed up the process, members of the tribe would blow tobacco smoke inside of the body. In the end, this would create a compact and well-preserved corpse that could be placed into these tiny coffins. The method actually worked so well that you can still see their intricate tattoos to this day. In our number 9 spot today, we have the unmarked sarcophagus. When archaeologists in Egypt found a mysteriously large black granite sarcophagus that was unmarked, they knew they were going to find something unexpected inside, but it truly was worse than anyone could have imagined. When opened, this sarcophagus was found to contain three skeletons, but unfortunately and disgustingly, according to officials, sewage had leaked into the coffin from a nearby road, which left these skeletons resting in that awful mess. Not only do I feel bad for the people who made this discovery, because truly how awful would that be, but I feel terrible for the people these skeletons belong to. Honestly, sometimes I feel like we should leave things and the dead alone, but in times like this, I'm glad these people were found. Further analysis revealed that those buried inside of the coffin included a young woman and two young men, all of which appear to have been placed on top of each other in different burials. One of the skeletons had clearly been on the receiving end of a medical treatment called trepanation, or making holes in the skull. In our number 8 spot today, we have the Lothagam North North Pillar site. One of the most incredible archaeological finds in Kenya led to a well. It wasn't exactly a horrifying discovery, but it certainly was unexpected. Around 5,000 years ago, a tribe of herders paused by a lake in what is now Kenya in order to bury their dead. This ended up turning into one of the most massive and monumental construction projects Africa has ever seen, which is no easy feat. For 450 years, they dug into the bedrock, piled up slabs of sandstone, and buried their dead for generations with ritual ceremonies, and this led to what researchers now consider the earliest and largest monumental cemetery in in Eastern Africa. Here's the one kind of unexpected thing that they found here at the site though. Along with the bodies of those who had passed, researchers also found 405 gerbil teeth at this site. As it turns out, there's a perfectly reasonable explanation for this, and it's because they were used to make a headpiece for just one of those who had passed away. This site might not be as large and tall as some of the other monuments like the Pyramids of Giza, but what makes them most remarkable is that this site was made by the people for the people, not for emperors or kings and queens, it was for tribe members of every age and gender all buried alongside each other. In our number 7 spot today, we have the ancient virus. With modern science comes ancient discoveries. Using advanced DNA sequencing on a 16th century mummy, a team of scientists revealed the complex and evolutionary history of hepatitis B, or the HBV virus. The genomic data was extracted from a 450 year old mummy, and it is the oldest evidence we have of the virus, which suggests that humans have lived with and evolved alongside HPV for centuries. While it's terrible to think of people suffering from an infection, especially one that thanks to modern medicine we have a vaccine for, this discovery gives immeasurable insight into the virus itself, and this can be used to help scientists understand it better. While I mentioned that there is a vaccine, this is something that is still highly deadly in our world for people who don't have access to it. The more we can learn about it, the better understanding we can have, which will hopefully in turn save people's lives. In our number 6 spot today, we have the Netherlands catacombs. Earlier this this year, while work was being done on a church in Delft, which is in the Netherlands, in order to extend the royal burial chamber that exists within the catacombs, there were about 200 skeletons that were suddenly uncovered. After months of digging, archaeologists reached a depth of 1.5 meters and they had found 150 people in proper graves, with 4 to 5 people found buried together in various charnel repositories. The discovery came shortly after there were bones from medieval times found on the square which the church stands, and it is said that researchers were finding a large difference between the two sets of remains. The square is said to have been a burying ground for the poor, while the church was left for the rich, which is where the main difference stems from, as people in the court are usually younger and in notably worse condition. Research is now being done to identify who these people may have been on both accounts. There's something really eerie about finding 200 skeletons located in the catacombs beneath a church. Okay, it's not a little eerie. 
it's a lot eerie. In our number five spot today, we have ancient tomb art. This tomb comes to us from a long time ago and it was located in the Shamir Heights in northern Israel. This tomb is large and it's made up of 400 tons of boulders and it stretches 65 feet wide. This chamber is said to date back 4,000 years, which is a shocking discovery because that means that humans may have been a part of an organized society in this area all those years ago. There are many paintings that have been found inside of this tomb, which made this the first time art had been documented inside one of these these chambers in the Middle East, which is incredible. We just haven't exactly been able to figure out what they depict yet. Inside of the chamber, there were the remains of three people. One of the most fascinating parts of this discovery is that there are these lines carved into the ceiling that are all connected to one arc, but we just don't know what it means. In our number four spot today, we have the Inca mummies. In 1976, researchers found two mummies at a burial site in northern Chile. These two corpses belonged to two young women who were the victims of human ritual sacrifice. It is likely that the sacrifice they were a part of was one that was carried out by the Inca to commemorate either historical or political events or as a response to natural disaster. The mummies were found wearing silver ornaments and they were surrounded by ceramic vessels and they were wearing red robes. The red in the Inca clothing was often created using hematite or other iron oxides, but upon further inspection of these mummies, it was revealed that their red clothing held something much more dangerous. The dye used for their clothing contained cinnabar, which is a mineral rich in mercury. This was often used in the ancient world as a pigment for makeup, clothing, and painting, but handling it leads to mercury poisoning. What is strange is that researchers believe that the toxicity of cinnabar was known in ancient Peru, so we aren't exactly sure why they used it in the first place, but it's thought it might have been used as protection against grave robbers. In our number three spot today, we have Man E. Okay, so normally when you're out in the field searching for mummies and tombs and all of that sort of archaeological business in Egypt, the containers or vessels that the past people are put in are decorated or contain some sort of drawings or writings. So in 1886, when Gaston Maspero, who was the head of the Egyptian antiquities, came across a plain burial box, he was a little intrigued as to what could be inside. This box had no information as to who the person inside may or may not be, but the corpse inside was wrapped in sheepskin, which apparently was considered unclean by the ancient Egyptians. When unwrapped, it was revealed that this person had both their hands and their feet bound, and as he looked towards the face of this person, he found what appeared to be a screaming face looking back at him. Back in 1886, we didn't have the same amount of information as we do now, so of course this quickly freaked researchers out and led to everyone believing that this person must have been tortured to death. How scary that must have been. But luckily, with the things we know now, we have a much less horrific answer. If the jaw of a person isn't strapped shut, when a body is mummified, the jaw naturally falls open, thus this horrible screaming expression. The real mystery that remains is how this mummy, who clearly wasn't considered a person of royalty, came to be buried alongside kings and queens. In our number two spot today, we have the Faliron Delta Necropolis. In 2016, during the construction of a new library and opera house in Athens, crews accidentally accidentally stumbled upon this necropolis, which is a cemetery that is the final resting place of more than 1,500 citizens from ancient Greece. And while this most definitely is an eerie discovery and a reminder of our own mortality, the horrifying discovery came when they found a smaller chamber within this one, and inside there were more than 80 skeletons that all had their hands shackled above their heads. How's that for a horrifying discovery? Each of these skeletons belonged to people who died young and healthy, and while the exact cause of death is yet to be determined, all signs are pointing to some kind of mass execution. Right now, the best theory as to who these people may have been is that they may be some of the people who were part of a coup in 632 BC that was led by Cylon against Athens. It's just strange that even after these people passed, they didn't unshackle them, but that just might be a mystery destined to stay a secret. In our number one spot today, we have the ancient mystery. Okay, this is one of the coolest things I've ever heard, and it has me rethinking my career. Maybe I do want to be an archaeologist after all. Basically, researchers have found a 1,300 year old Chinese mystery, and where did they find it? In a Tomb Raider's shaft. This feels like a Hollywood blockbuster, and somehow it's just real ancient life. While excavating a tomb in China, the team discovered the skeleton of a young man who was riddled with wounds, giving clues as to how he died. The man is estimated to have been about 25 years old, and it is thought that he was harmed and then thrown into the Tomb Raider shaft while he was still alive, which is absolutely
absolutely gruesome. It is believed that this crime took place between 640 and 680 AD. It appears as though he wasn't a thief because the shaft had begun to be refilled with soil by the time of his death, so we really aren't sure why this young man met this cruel fate. As a true crime enthusiast, this is absolutely fascinating and I really wish we could find some answers to bring this guy's story full circle, but sometimes these things just stay a secret. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have KV55. This is a tomb that is referred to by a number rather than a name because we don't actually know who lies inside of the tomb. While this tomb had its modern discovery in 1907, we still haven't quite found the answers surrounding this mystery. To make things a little more eerie, while the walls of the actual tomb are bare, which is bizarre, as you walk down the steps towards the tomb, you'll notice that there are some markings leading up to it. You'll see inscribed on the wall of the entrance the words which can be translated to, quote, the evil one shall not live again. If this wasn't enough to give you an unsettling feeling, the coffin inside of the tomb has been desecrated with part of the face having been removed as well. So all in all, we don't know a lot about what's going on down there, but it doesn't seem good. In our number 9 spot today we have chapter 17. Archaeologists had a large and very exciting discovery as the 4,200 year old funerary temple of Queen Neerit, who is the wife of the pharaoh Teddy, was found. The recently excavated Soraka necropolis was stocked full of incredible treasures. Inside there were over 50 wooden sarcophagi, there was a board game, a river boat with rowers, statues, wooden masks, a shrine dedicated to the god of the dead Anubis, and there was a burial sanctuary dedicated to the queen, and while all of these are truly unbelievable finds, one of the most fascinating to researchers was a scroll from the Book of the Dead. The 13 foot long papyrus scroll, which is referred to as chapter 17 of the Book of the Dead, acts as a chilling guide to the afterlife. In our number 8 spot today we have Golden Tongues. A team was working at a temple on the outskirts of the Egyptian city Alexandria when they discovered 16 burials in rock cut tombs. It was here that they found some mummy that unfortunately had been poorly preserved over the last 2,000 years, but it was what they found with these mummies that was exceptionally interesting. Inside a few of the mummies' mouths were golden tongues nestled inside of their jawbones. It is thought that the dead were given these gold foil amulets that were shaped like tongues so that they could speak before the court of the god Osiris in the afterlife. Osiris is the god of fertility, agriculture, the afterlife, the dead, resurrection, life, and vegetation, and he was also the judge of the dead so it is imperative that those headed to the afterlife impress him. When we break it down and understand why these gold tongues might have been placed with the bodies, it becomes less of a horrifying discovery and more of an absolutely fascinating one. In our number 7 spot today we have 5,000 year old tombs. While researchers were working in the Dakhalia province in the area where the Nile River drains into the Mediterranean Sea, they found something unbelievable. It was here that they unearthed tombs that were over 5,000 years old. 68 tombs from 3 3300 BC during the Bhutto period were located, along with five that were from 3100 BC during the Nakata III period. Some of the Bhutto tombs were found with the human remains in a squatting position, while the Nakata period vessels were more cylindrical and pear-shaped. This cemetery combines some of the earliest periods of Egyptian history along with some of the most important eras. Other cool things found in this area included ovens, stoves, pottery vessels, as well as amulets and scarabs some of which were made out of semi-precious stones. In our number 6 spot today we have Marcus. Inside the necropolis of Porto Sarno, which was found in the ancient Roman city of Pompeii, a tomb was found which held the remains of Marcus Venerius Secundio, and these remains are the best preserved ones ever found in ruins. The partially mummified remains included hair and bones and even a partial ear, and they belong to Marcus, who was a former slave who was able to rise through the ranks. This discovery was unusual because tests showed that Marcus died around the age of 60, and during Roman times, adults were usually cremated. After being freed from slavery, Marcus was able to join a college of priests who were in charge of a form of emperor worship. Being buried inside of a tomb is a reflection of the fact that when he passed, he was in good social and economic standing. It is believed that this tomb dates back decades before the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD destroyed Pompeii. In our number 5 spot today, we have Tomb Storeroom. 
during the excavations of a 2,600 year old vast necropolis that sits just south of Cairo, researchers unearthed a tomb, of course, or else why would I be talking about it right now, but here's the thing about this specific tomb. It had a storeroom that was housing about two dozen mummies. The tomb was located at the bottom of a 36 feet deep shaft, and the 22 mummies were found along the tomb walls. The mummies are believed to date back to 640 BC during the 26th dynasty, which was Egypt's last independent kingdom. Many of the mummies were unfortunately poorly preserved, so their identities, as well as the reason why so many were put into one room, is left as a bit of a mystery. In our number four spot today, we have a Bronze Age tomb. Imagine you're a farmer in Ireland and one day you're just minding your own business and somehow managed to stumble upon an ancient tomb that's basically been untouched for thousands of years. Well, that's pretty much exactly what happened when a burial site was uncovered on southwest Ireland's Dingle Peninsula. Inside this site, researchers found human bones along with items that may give us some insights into prehistoric burial and death rituals. This tomb is believed to date back to the Bronze Age, but unlike other tombs from the time, this one was completely underground, which means that it may be even older than once suspected. The tomb was found during some land improvement work when literally a stone was turned over and it revealed the chamber underneath. In our number 3 spot today we have mice. A couple years ago in 2019, as archaeologists were searching through a well preserved and beautifully painted tomb that had been found in the Egyptian town of Sohog, the tomb is thought to be from around 2000 years ago and was built for a man named Tutu and his wife. Other than the human mummies that were found found inside of this tomb, researchers also found animal mummies, including dozens of mummified mice. This tomb is one of seven that were found in the area after authorities found smugglers digging illegally for artifacts, which honestly sounds like it should be the plot of a movie. While I'm sure these kinds of discoveries are insanely important and helpful for all kinds of researchers, finding dozens of mummified animals along with human mummies probably isn't the nicest discovery there's ever been. In our number two spot today we have a gibbon skull. Gibbons are a type of ape that are often characterized by their swinging ability coupled with their loud, bright calls, and the 8th century Chinese poet Li Bai described their voices as they swung past the Yangtze River, but here's the thing. Today, there are no gibbons that live anywhere near the river. Also, the gibbons that exist now have different fur patterns from the ones that are often depicted in classical Chinese paintings. This has led experts to believe that there must have been another kind of gibbon that has now vanished, and physical evidence of this kind of gibbon might have turned up in the most unexpected place. A tomb. This tomb, which was built for the grandmother of the first emperor of China nearly 2,300 years ago, contained a skull and a jawbone so distinct that scientists believe they must belong to this member of the now extinct gibbon genus. Many surviving gibbon species are now facing extinction, so it is likely that there were others in the past who unfortunately faced the same kind of fate. In our number one spot today, we have canopic jars. This is a discovery that is actually quite a common find in tombs, but that doesn't make it a pleasant one, although there is a reasonable explanation behind this. Canopic jars are often found in tombs, and in 2018, in the tomb of Carabaskin, which was found on the west bank of Luxor, there were some well-preserved jars found. The jars were made of Egyptian alabaster, and they most likely held viscera. That's right, folks. These jars usually held the organs of the person inside of the tomb. They were used during the mummification process in order to store and preserve the organs so that they could be used in the afterlife. There wasn't just one jar, but rather a jar for specific organs. While in modern times this is a gruesome discovery, it's also absolutely fascinating to see how people of the past cared for those who have passed away, as well as seeing how strong the belief in the afterlife used to be. Starting off this countdown, we have the chariot. A really cool artifact found in King Tut's tomb was his chariot. The chariot was found dismantled, but they ended up reconstructing it for display. Okay, first off. How did they build that ancient thing without any blueprints? That's talent right there. Because I struggle building IKEA furniture even with blueprints. Now, what makes this artifact significant is that it's theorized that the chariot might have been King Tut's cause of death. King Tut was found with a fractured lower leg, shattered pelvis, and ribs. A new analysis shows that he was crushed on one side of his body. 
likely while on his knees. So some believe that he fell from his chariot in a horrific accident and died. If this is the case, then that thing is most certainly cursed. Moving on at number 9, we have the meat mummy container. So apparently mummies get hungry on the way to the afterlife. As a result, they are often buried with food. The food is carefully preserved so that they can last a long time for their lengthy journey. This is done by preparing the meat for eating, then wrapping the meat in linen. So they basically mummify the meat. In King Tut's tomb, they found 48 containers of meat mummies. Guess King Tut is a big eater. Good thing that we took away his source of food from him. Like, come on guys, you're making the curse worse than it is. This dude's gonna be mad. I mean, I would be if people took away food from me. We all know how sacred food is. In our eighth spot, we have the toe and finger caps. This is one of the more odd items found in King Tut's tomb. So King Tut was found with gold toe caps on his feet and fingers. That's right just little golden covers for each individual toe and finger. These were placed on the divine after death so that their toes and fingers keep their shape. These were placed onto his body during mummification. It's also thought to protect the dead from magical dangers. Now, I'm hoping that they didn't remove these little caps from his body, but chances are they probably did. So if anything happens to his digits, boy, he's gonna be mad. Coming in at number 7, we have the woven gloves. Experts believe that this next piece is one of the few items that was actually used by King Tut while he was alive. International Egyptologist Tarek El Awadi said, and I quote, Most of the objects found in the tomb are ceremonial or designed to be used by the pharaoh in the afterlife. But he believes that these gloves were probably worn by King Tut, either during the winter time or when he was riding his royal chariot. That's pretty cool. I mean, the gloves don't look too stylish, but I think all of these ancient artifacts are so amazing. Moving on to number 6, we have the canopic jars. As part of their burial process, Egyptians would place the internal organs of the dead into four jars before mummification. One jar had King Tut's lungs, another had his stomach, another had his intestines, and one was for his liver. And apparently I say intestines wrong. That's how it is in Canada. Sorry. <laughs> the jars were found inside of an alabaster chest. It was thought that King Tut needed these organs in the afterlife, which is why they were preserved. Observed. Not only that, but four goddesses protected them. But now these jars have been moved to the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. But his body is still in its original resting place. Great. So King Tut's body and his internal organs are kept separate. Bet he loves that. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the walking sticks. Among the countless artifacts Tut was buried with, a more interesting one would be his walking sticks. But he wasn't just buried with one walking stick. No, he was buried with 130 walking sticks. Why he needed that many is beyond me. So what we do know is that King Tut had a deformed left leg. People theorize that he had a rare bone disorder called Kohler's disease, and that's what caused this deformity. So it may just be that he needed a walking stick to get around. In fact, in tons of depictions, he was drawn with this walking stick. Some think that it was just a royal staff. But with the newfound evidence of his foot, it's more likely that he needed them for mobility. And chances are, they're cursed. And they have been separated from King Tut's body. Meaning, he's stuck in the afterlife, probably hobbling around since we took away his sticks. Like, come on people, stop angering the king. Coming in at number 4, we have Anubis. Guarding the entrance of King Tut's tomb was a statue of a black jackal on top of a podium. This jackal is known as Anubis, the god of the afterlife. Anubis is said to protect the dead, guarding their spirits from trespassers. The jackal was 3 feet long, made of wood and plaster. This was then painted black, which is the symbolic color of Anubis. Black was chosen since it represents death and decay, but it also symbolizes the fertile soil of the Nile and regeneration. It's crazy how much detail was put into these things. So Anubis was placed outside of King Tut's tomb as kind of a no trespassing sign. But we trespass, so now it's cursed. I mean, it's said that Anubis punishes the mortals who ignore its warning and disturb the dead. In our third spot, we have Tut's burial mask. 
Tut's burial mask, otherwise known as a death mask, was found in King Tut's coffin resting directly on the shoulders of his mummy. Okay, with a name like death mask, gotta be cursed. So these masks were made to resemble the person that it was placed on. It was done so that the spirits could recognize the body after death and help them to the underworld. The mask was filled with oils which helped with the mummification process. Not only that, but at the back of the mask there was a protective spell inscribed into it. The spell was to protect Tut's limbs as he travels to the underworld. Now, according to rumors, Tut's beard on the mask was accidentally snapped off and then glued back on. So not only did they remove a protective mask from King Tut, but they broke it too. Yeah, King Tut is probably really upset about that. Let's hope this didn't interfere with him getting into the underworld. Coming in at number two, we have King Tut. So obviously one of the biggest discoveries in King Tut's tomb was King Tut himself. He was buried in a coffin, placed inside another coffin, inside another coffin, inside another coffin. There were eight coffins in total. So like I mentioned before, anyone that handles King Tut's body or his artifacts are said to be cursed. After Tut's body was found, he was sent to a radiologist to get x-rayed. The radiologist's name was Sir Archibald Douglas Reed. The next day, after conducting the x-ray, Reed fell sick. He died three days later. His death is blamed on King Tut's curse. And in our number one spot, we have the Cobra Staff. So this is where it gets interesting. Rumor has it that the reason why several men mysteriously died after the expedition was because one of the workers stole King Tut's Cobra Staff. Howard Carter claimed that when they found the tomb, it was already robbed. But he may have said that to cover up the fact that him and his team took a couple of artifacts as souvenirs, particularly the Cobra Staff. Ironically enough, one of Carter's team members, James Henry Breasted, returned home to find his pet canary eaten by a cobra. And the cobra was still occupying the cage. Hmm. A cobra staff goes missing, and a cobra is found in his home. Coincidence? I think not. Mm -hmm. 